The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Get involved with Access Fort Wayne and make your own television programming. Call 421-1250 to find out more. Welcome to the Blue Body Army Show. I hope you all will enjoy it. Have a good day. You want to hold the camera, Marianne? Oh, yeah. Thank you. 
<laughs> the first stop is at the name after your mom. <laughs> you know that, Wells? <laughs> Wells and a few.
these Burmese immigrants came to our community, they didn't have a lot of the produce available that they are used to consuming. So we have found a way to enable them to grow that produce um, from their mainland and then share that with their community. Um, the other portion of this tour is um, the Rose Avenue Rehab Project, which is a Save Law Me um, adventure. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, I have Jane Young here. She is the president of Heartland Communities. And Jane is going to talk to you um, a little bit more about what she's doing with the Burmese farm and um, some of their yields and their growing styles. So welcome to Rose Avenue. Yeah. That's a million. Start walking Away from the bus motor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for everybody to kind of get up here so I can say a couple of things. Come on up. Did the switch keep out? Yeah. I thought he did. Uh, I'll ask you to stay in with me. Oh, he might be on the other side. Oh, Hi, I'm Jane. Uh, I'm an administrator of a nonprofit called Heartland Communities. And the first thing I wanted to say is this is a working farm and there's a lot of trip hazards. So. This uh, irrigation pipe goes through here. You can see this red uh, hose that goes out over there at the wash house. So there's things like that uh, that are trip hazards, uneven ground, uh, walnuts in the road. So I just want you know, keep your eyes down when you're walking because there's a lot of uh, a lot of trip hazards. I'm, I'm the one that was tripping the ball. I do it here a year and a half ago. Broke my arm. So I'm always on the lookout, and that's. Uh, something I'm really aware of. I want everybody to watch out where you're walking. And we should be okay as long as we stick to either the driveway or this uh, area right along the edge of the field here. Okay, so that's the important stuff. Uh, so, welcome to Rose Avenue Farm. Um, we operate here under a grant from the Office of Refugee Resettlement. Uh, it's a, called a RAF grant stands for Refugee Agricultural Partnership Program. The partners are Heartland Communities, uh, which is the grantee, uh, Save Mommy, which owns the land, and an organization called the Workers Project uh, that looks out for workers who are not represented by unions to help them make their jobs more tolerable without getting fired. Uh, the Workers Project has a, a Burmese Workers Initiative uh, that um, works with Burmese workers, which are often hired by a handful of companies in this area and then treated like a private third world workforce. And it's, it can be really bad and they don't have a lot of uh, help and defense, so Workers Project helps with that. So I've been working in the local food space since about 2013 and um, one day I went to a Burmese Workers Initiative meeting and I said hey I'm working in local food and agriculture and if you or any of the people that you know are interested in agriculture I will help and they all kind of made in a huddle and talked to each other and then they turned and said yes we really want to be farmers we were farmers before we came here and now we're stuck in these crappy manufacturing jobs and we really would like nothing more than to be farmers again. I was like, okay, I'll see what I can do. And so we did a couple of things. We went on a tour of some greenhouses, which was fun. Two of them were Amish. One was super old fashioned with a coal fired heater in the greenhouse. The other one was a state of the art. Uh, uh, solar power and aquaponics greenhouse. 
which they were pretty excited about. Bought eighty dollars worth of fish on the spot. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> went out there and got plastic bags <laughs> put fish flopping around. It was great. And uh, um, then the um, state refugee coordinator Matt Schomburg heard about us and what we were doing, and invited us up to his office, and he said, "I think you should apply for this grant." And it's a grant that requires a state refugee coordinator to sign off on it. So uh, he's on our oversight committee, along with people from the Workers' Project and Associated Churches and various people uh, on the oversight committee. And so we applied for that grant. We got it. We're now on our second, uh, it's a three-year grant. We're now in our second version. So this is our fifth year out here at the farm. And uh, what we have is approximately 10 acres. It's divided up into just under half acre plots. Each farmer gets a plot for the season. They plant whatever they want. They're required to use uh, organic approved methods uh, and, and sprays and things. And um, we've had lots of educational opportunities. And uh, some of them have been conservation oriented. They're not really convinced on that. Uh, they really are into tilling the soil, um, but we're working on it. You see this uh, one that's all grown up in weeds, that plot has not been assigned. A uh, fellow that's been here the last four years decided at the last moment not to uh, participate, so we're working on getting somebody to do that one. So we have a bunch of equipment. Um, you can see just past the hoop house there is a wellhead sticking up. Uh, first thing we did was put in a 200 foot deep tube well. We did that because about a mile and a half up the road here, the so Maumee River comes along here, takes a big sharp bend right up at the, uh, near the corner of the of the garden and goes you know, big in a, in a big loop. But right up the road here is a Superfund site, really bad industrial way active Superfund site, and I have no idea how the groundwater is, how big the plume is. I know it, it extends at least to River Haven because you can see it in their water. So we were not about to irrigate an organic garden with groundwater. So we went 200 foot deep and it cost $18,000 putting that in. But now, and then we got a grant to do solar. We got a solar, solar panel there. So essentially, you know, other than maintaining the lines, water is free irrigate and we have on an average year we have about 50,000 running feet of drip line of uh, irrigating this with the, with the deep tube well. It's pretty sulfury but the soil likes the sulfur. So um, then, uh, we, uh, we got an NRCS grant for the hoop house. Um, and we're we, and then three of our farmers also got NRCS grants for the two houses, so there's good, supposed to be another three uh, along along the edge here. Soon we ran into some trouble with the building department. I won't go into that, so that's been delayed. And uh, uh, so, uh, what else can I say? There's a, a little shed up there that has the the uh, pump works in it and the solar panel. Um, uh, everything, you know, the electricity uh, for there. Um, this here is a vegetable washing station. You can kind of see from there, uh, farmers can bring their loads of, of uh, vegetables, put them on there, there's layers overhead, there's two big tanks to soak vegetables in, uh, so they wash and cut their things in there. There is a French drain underneath there um, that Doug got a 55 gallon barrel cut in half uh, to keep dirt from falling down and it's got gravel and then it's got a trench that goes all the way out beyond the end over there that's maybe four foot deep and two foot wide and it's full of gravel. So the water drains into there and, and it doesn't, the first year we didn't have that, we were all standing on pallets because it was mud, <laughs> we were washing vegetables standing ankle deep in mud, it was bad. So it's a lot better now. There's also a hand wash sink there, 
uh, to go with that porta potty. And then there's down the way there's another porta potty and another hand wash sink that comes right off the irrigation line. So this red pipe is here. It comes right off the irrigation pipe to supply the water for washing vegetables and washing hands. Um, if anybody has any questions or anything, just feel free to speak right up. Uh, How many do you have? Like 20 individual farmers, then, or families? Yeah, there are 16 plots that we dedicate to them. The rest of them have other greenhouses, and, and we have a, a reserve plot for demonstration. Um, if we could have the, the funding to pay somebody to do to, to do it, which we haven't the last year, so yeah. And there are uh, three or four families where the husband and the wife each signed up separately, so they have a whole acre between them, or nearly an acre. Um, and so they, you know, they do twice as much. Uh, and then the rest of them have approximately half an acre. Uh, the biggest crop they do is called sour leaf. It's hibiscus roselle, which is the same plant that uh, your hibiscus tea comes from. But the hibiscus tea is the flower buds, and they use the leaf. So they never let it grow big enough for the flowers. They sell the heck out of that. It's, it's, it's huge uh, in the Burmese community. Oh, can't shout over that. Do you know what this, these are right here? No, I was looking at that. I'm not sure what that is. Not, not very much of it. Um, occasionally they'll sell me a few radishes, <laughs> but uh, or some green beans. Uh, but we have the first year and a half we uh, did the downtown farmers market on Bar Street, and we had a double wide booth, and we had you know there's essentially ten farms all so we're all crammed in there with these tables, and each of them sold you know, a couple hundred dollars worth, which is for, you know, one stall, that's, you know, over a thousand dollars a week, which isn't too bad for a farmer's market, but that's ten farmers. And then eventually, one of the farmers, the elder, one of the elders said, we need to have a market out of Autumnwood, which is an apartment complex in the southeast part of town that's mostly Burmese. So I went there, and I was called there, they, they wouldn't let us. But next door to that is the Leaf for the Blind and Disabled right there on your Paulding and Anthony. And I talked to them and they let us set up there. So we're now on our fourth, this will be our fourth season having a market there. We have it on Saturdays and Sundays from about mid-July until the weather gets too bad in September, October. And last year we sold $180,000 of vegetables wow. at that market, Saturday and Sunday. Partly because uh, we take SNAP, EBT, uh, our organization Heartland Communities incubated a, a distribution company called Plowshares Food Hub, uh, which also has Plowshares at the market down at Union Street at Electric Works. We have, we have to have the produce stall down there. Um, and so it's kind of awkward for a nonprofit to do commerce. So we created this other, this agricultural cooperative that does all the marketing things, all the markets and you know commerce. Uh, so then the heartland, the, the nonprofit doesn't have to fill out all the extra paperwork and justify and pay taxes. It, it just gets too complicated. So we have a separate organization that does that. So uh, Plowshares that was able to take the, the SNAP card, food stamp card, and St. Joe Foundation got a grant called GusNIP, that's a nutrition incentive. They have a program called Double Up. So for every dollar spent with a food stamp card on fruits or vegetables, they get another dollar's worth for free. So it's half, essentially half price. So, and a lot of refugees have those cards. So it's super popular. I sit there at the checkout table with two interpreters. Often I'm the only English speaker there other than the interpreters. And they have laptops and they're ringing people in. They have a, we have a program to keep track of of how much each farmer sells so that we can do payouts to each individual farmer. And they just, they're just ringing, there's lines. I'm, I'm sitting in between them with the, with the, this 
swiper. I'm just swiping cards as fast as I can for five solid hours, Saturday and Sunday, all summer long. That's what I do on the weekends. And, uh, and that's what I've done on the weekends for the last four years, all summer long. And probably will again for the next couple of years. Uh, but it's really great. And there's other opportunities too. Um, there's a program called Local Food Purchase Assistance that uh, come down through the state where the government buys vegetables from local farmers and then they get distributed to the food banks or whatever. And so uh, the, the Local Food Purchase Assistance Program focuses on disadvantaged farmers. So veterans, people of color, women farmers and it's to purchase from them. So we qualify under the, the disadvantaged uh, farmers uh, label. And so last year we sold through that procurement program about uh, $15,000 worth of vegetables and then went to the Burmese neighborhoods and gave them away as part of that. So that, that's really great. Well, more opportunities for the farmers to grow and sell. Is there a membership that they a fee that they pay for their half acre? No, they don't pay anything. It's all it's because all covered the by the grant. grant. Yeah. yeah. Well, if the grant ever ends, then we'll have to work out a new deal with the landowner, which is Save on Me. And because there's things right now, you know, when when I uh, applied for the grant, I put in there a certain amount for a land lease. It just turns out that Save Mommy was donated this property right at the time that we got the grant. But Save Mommy is, you know, then applied for uh, uh, tax property tax exemption. So they don't want to they don't want to do a lease and be making money. So what we did was a MOU memorandum of understanding where we use the land and then we pay for certain expenses on behalf of Save Mommy rather than paying rent. And that way it it, it, uh, it works out. Everybody gets what they need. And so. You know, the grant pays for certain things. There's a big landfill hill you'll see it in the back there, and we pay to mow that. We pay for the porta potties you know, that are available for Save Mommy um, events and cer certain other uh, expenses like that. And this is floodplain, correct? Um, this is 100 year floodplain okay. up in here. Right at the back of the field, there's a berm, and on the other side of that berm, it's, it's wetland. The whole property is about 56 acres, I think, something like that. So we have approximately 10 of it up here. And this is the high ground. This was a corn field prior to um, us using it like that. So it's been agriculture forever. Lady next door, Allison, uh, will tell you all about the history. Um, there's it's all part of a 100 acre land grant that was given to a man named Jesse Adams, who was, I believe, a, like the medical doctor for Anthony Wayne in the fort. And John Adams gave him this 100-acre land grant that both of these properties are part of it, all the way down about to Beats Nature Preserve right there at Hartsville Road. It's all 100 acres and, and, and bordered by Trier Ditch on this side. And so it's it was the first uh, cultivated land by, by a European you got your phone, right? In uh, Adams mm -hmm. Township. In fact, it was named the guy that did it, Jesse Adams. He was the one who, the first squire, who was the first township trustee, and named it Adams Township, not after himself, but after John Adams. <laughs>
please subscribe to my YouTube, Blue Money Army. Get up in the morning, cup of milk, let's rock and roll Kink out, kick the drum, rolling on like a rolling stone Sing song when I'm walking home